Video games are hard for me to talk about. I mean, I could sit here and talk for hours about a movie or a TV show and give you my thoughts on why I love it or hate it, but for some reason with video games, it's so much harder to me. I think it's honestly surprising considering I've been playing them my whole life and I have a deep connection to a lot of video games. Some of them are my favorite media in general, but I just can never quite nail what I want to say half the time, and I think that kind of goes to me having a general lack of knowledge on how things are done sometimes, and just playing the same types of games over and over so I feel like I don't have enough depth in my opinion. It's one of the reasons I've stayed away from talking about about video games, with a notable exception being Breath of the Wild, of course. However, recently I played a game that shattered my idea of what I liked in video games, one that made me rethink how I play them and how I potentially talk about them, and that game was Red Dead Redemption 2. I've gone the last while thinking I didn't like stories in video games. I thought most of them were agonizingly long and pointless, and if I was going to play a video game, I wanted to play it, not watch cutscenes. If I wanted a brilliantly told and entertaining story, I'd watch a movie or TV show, or hell, even read a book. I don't need that in my video games. And that thought process unfortunately kept me away from a lot of games. Until I bought a PS4 and got Red Dead Redemption 2, that is. Instantly, I actually thought that something was going to be different here, and I was right. Now, full transparency, I haven't played the first game, I never owned a PS3 or Xbox 360 when it came out, and I still don't own one, so I'm not really sure when I'll get the chance to play it. So I was going into Red Dead Redemption 2 as my first introduction to the world, and given that it's a prequel, I think that was a good thing. I will admit I wasn't fully hooked into the game at first as far as the single player experience goes. I spent a lot of time screwing around in the open world with my friend Parker in the online mode. I never really thought about playing the main story. Again, I was anti-video game story. I thought what was the point if I wasn't going to enjoy it? It also doesn't help that the whole first chapter is kind of slow and boring. It's in a snowy area that's a pain in the ass to traverse, and the whole thing is just kind of drab, and I didn't really enjoy playing through it. It left a bad impression on me, and I just kind of cast it aside and decided I didn't really care to play anymore. That changed, though, as I got bored with the online mode without something to play with, Parker wasn't always available, and neither was anyone else I played with, and I had an itch to play the game, so I inevitably got back on the single player and just started playing. I did a lot of it on Discord with some friends, and I actually enjoyed it a lot. The game's improves it ton once you exit the first chapter, but I still can't say I was really hooked. I even streamed a good bit of it to try and get myself more into the game, and even that didn't do a good enough job sometimes. However, that all changed in a single scene. One scene changed how I viewed the game. I don't know why, but it did. Something about this first confrontation between Milton and Arthur just changed everything for me. It made me start to care about these characters. Something about the way the subtle and carefree scene turns into a dire and serious moment just completely changed things. And honestly, from then on, I was completely hooked. Like I said, I became invested and I actually actively wanted to play more to get to know more. I wanted to see where everything went and I really wanted to get into it. I began to learn to love these characters. I loved Arthur and how he wanted to be a better man. It kept getting sucked into this unhealthy circle of people around him. I loved Dutch and his way of leading and how it brought some together but alienated others all the same, and I even loved John and his lack of accountability and how that turned into a great dynamic between him and Arthur by the end of the game. But fuck Micah. And all of this was realized by the end of chapter 2, and I was in for such a better time in the next two chapters because chapter 3 is when things really, really get going. The story works here because you're at the top of your game. Really, the whole gang is you're playing two families and manipulating an entire town to get what you want, and I love it. I love the feeling of everything building up, and I love how it all comes crashing down towards the end. The second to last mission here is one of the absolute best in the entire game. From spectacle and story, it's just oozing with so much greatness. Seeing the entire gang go in to get that boy back from the burning down mansion. It was fucking awesome. I can't think of another moment in the game where I was that invested in it simply from a story perspective rather than the gameplay. Chapter 4 is probably even better and I'd say it's my favorite chapter in the entire game. I love how, again, you feel at top of everything. You've avoided the law, you've gotten your revenge, you controlled an entire town and played two people and got away with it. You can't be stopped. Everything is going so well. Arthur's character really gets interesting here for me. I love seeing how he reacts to everything going on. I feel like this is when he really starts to try and change and when he wants to go in a different direction than the rest of the game.
slowly he's not reacting the same to Dutch anymore he's seeing him more erratically and all the coalesces when they get played by Angelo Bronte who portrays them during an awful robbery gone south seeing this play out was really really great the entire time the gang is still riding the high of everything in chapter 3 getting away with everything and then sucking up to Bronte and thinking they're going to get away with everything again only for it to just utterly go awry is so so wonderful and it's the biggest turning point that leads to an amazing moment with Dutch killing Bronte and Arthur finally realizes things are kind of turning south. And chapter 4 doesn't stop there. It gets even better with the final mission. The robbery of the San Denis bank goes so wrong that I don't think I could ever imagine going it the way it was planned. Within an instant, Hosea, another character that I grew extremely close to and loved, is killed and the entire thing falls to absolute shit. You barely get out alive and when you do, you're only just able to escape on a boat, which then wrecks leaving you on a shoreline with nothing but each other. This bank mission is not only the best mission in the game as far as gameplay is concerned, but the story is so, so tense here and I could didn't stop playing it. Honestly, I keep saying this, but man, the game keeps getting fucking better and better. Chapters 5 and 6 are much more linear and story focused, but that doesn't make them any less good. Chapters 1 and 4 were definitely focused on story, but they allowed you to go to each place and do what you want to do all the same. However, chapter 5 is entirely relegated to the island of Guarma, and each mission begins after the next. It's a really nice chop up and break from the normal gameplay loop of the game, which has been, again, story focused, but you were able to go into different places and explore the world at your own ease. To have a more linear level based gameplay here I think was a really great change of pace and I kind of like having everything stripped away from you. It's it's really awesome. I can see why some people would have issues with it but I honestly love it. And from a story perspective it is the absolute best thing to follow up after chapter 4. After two chapters of everything seemingly going right everything is now stripped away from you and you're just really struggling to stay alive. You get to see Dutch at his absolute worst. He makes calls that never should be made and through a bunch of big moments Arthur starts to lose sight of the man he felt like was a father to him. The best thing about this, in my opinion, is that at this point, you feel like Dutch has changed too. You and Arthur are both shocked, annoyed, betrayed, angry, and confused at what's changed and what's going on with him. And it's kind of an insane moment that I, I wasn't really expecting to feel. Dutch, this man who helped you so often, now strangled a woman, saying she was going to betray them when she absolutely wasn't. He left John back at the bank to die. The entirety of the Guarma chapter is riddled with these moments and it's just so, so great. Not only are you stranded on an island without anything and just with the people you know, you're not even sure you know some of them anymore. Guarma also has some amazing set pieces, whether it's the boat sequence where you're trying to escape or when you actually get back and you reunite with the gang in a really satisfying way. It's the turning point of the game when you realize things aren't going to end well, especially when Arthur passes out in the streets of San Denis. Having Arthur contract tuberculosis is such a fantastic decision. It just feels right, and I love how it was set up in an earlier mission and that you'll never really pick up on. It's also perfectly timed. He just survived an awful ordeal on an awful island where he became disconnected to those closest to him, and now he's being told he's a dead man. Chapter 6 has another change of gameplay, except instead of changing the way the game is structured, it changes how it's played. Arthur now has tuberculosis, and it really helps drive the story home that you can't play the game like you used to. I know some people dislike it, but I love it. It made me feel more connected to the story and more interesting. The fact that I would have to wait and watch Arthur, after a mission ended, sit there and try to catch his breath, or see him cough during missions, or cutscenes, or not being able to eat enough food to heal yourself sometimes and being more slower and more vulnerable, it drove the entire thing home and made it sink so much deeper in and just made me so much more impacted by it. Chapter 6 is the best culmination to the game that I could have absolutely asked for. The entire game leads up to here. Dutch and his character are becoming more twisted and confused, being persuaded by Micah Bell, who is such an awful person and a character that I absolutely detest. It's insane to see him be turned into the villain he is in the first game. John and Arthur growing ever closer after having to rescue him from Sisica and Arthur's need for redemption all are such big points here that it just makes this feel like the most climactic and important chapter in the entire game. There's also the added Native Americans too that I absolutely love. I love Eagle Flies. He's a brave freedom fighter and it's inspiring to fight alongside him and Reigns Falls as a replacement for Dutch in the last bit of Arthur's life is such a great choice. There's so many scenes that are just so amazing between these two characters that I'll just sit and think about them even months after beating the game. I love 
the last bit of this game so much. I love finally being able to kill Milton. I love the end off with everything and the other people that you had to go up against. I love the final heist. I love how wrong it goes yet again. John being left for dead and then the final fight with Micah is so good. I love the reveal that Micah's been the mole the entire time. Everything about that is fantastic. The decision to go back for the money or help John escape is a choice I made without a second thought. I had to help John. I cared and needed for him to get away safely. It didn't matter that I knew he was the main character in the first game. I needed to know that he got away okay right now. It was so important to me. Micah Bell ends the game as a truly terrific villain. Again, the final fight between him and Arthur is fantastic. I absolutely love it. I think it's just an insane fact that they made such a simple melee mechanic work so well for such a climactic fight. And I love that it's always going to end the same way, but you always have these glimpses of hope that something may change. Arthur's death is something that I knew happened. I unfortunately had it spoiled, but it still hit me insanely hard. Arthur Morgan may very well be the best video game protagonist I've ever played as. He's just insanely deeply layered in ways I can't even begin to describe without sounding pretentious, but he's also just relatable and easy to enjoy playing as. And I think that's what makes this entire experience from his life to his death work so well is that he is one of the best written characters I've seen in any media. The epilogue itself is great too. It's a great bridge between the prequel and the first game and seeing the world post Arthur is great. I love killing Micah at the end too. It's just so wonderful. It almost felt like an afterthought for me though, mainly because John just wasn't Arthur, but the scenes between John and Abigail are great and I think it's really solid dialogue. So I, I do still really, really like the epilogue a lot and it's a really great thing to go back and see John's reaction to different areas and how things have changed after Arthur's death. Combine everything I've just said over this video with the beautifully made and amazingly detailed open world, one where sometimes the simple act of just riding your horse slowly through an empty field feels like enough interaction for the game to be enjoyable, and I truly think Red Dead Redemption 2 is one of the best games I've ever played, and one of my favorite games I've ever played. And I know I didn't touch on everything. There's a lot of characters I didn't talk about, there's some other things I left out and I barely touched on gameplay. For a uh, brief summary of my gameplay thoughts, it's pretty good, it's a little dated, but I think it's still perfect fine and has some really great moments still but my main point of this video was how it changed my mind on story games how it made me like them because of this game i've given others a chance and i've loved what i found it's introduced me to the fact that video games can tell amazing stories too i don't think this game's story could be told in any other medium maybe possibly a multi-season television show but even then it wouldn't be nearly as impactful waiting for each season to come out and the gameplay advantages to some story devices would be lost completely it uses its medium to the absolute advantage and i think it's one of the things that makes this game stand out compared to every other video game story that i had played before it please if you get the chance chance, play Red Dead Redemption 2 for yourself because I don't think you'll regret it. And there it is. There's my video on Red Dead Redemption 2, a video I've been talking about making for fucking ages and I finally made it. I just wanted to make sure it was a video that I was happy with putting out and I wrestled with what I wanted to talk about. I didn't want to make it too long, but I wanted to still make it in depth enough to where I could talk about that it was a very big game for me and changing how I viewed storytelling in video games. In fact, this is even part one of a series where I'm going to be diving into multiple games over the span of probably the next couple of years and how they have changed my mind on storytelling in video games. So if you're interested in seeing more of those, go ahead and click subscribe. I'll probably be doing more video game type content in the future as I've had a great time talking about games like this in Fall Guys and even Breath of the Wild. They've been amazing videos for me and I would really love to make more. So if you're interested in that, please go ahead and subscribe and also make content on movies and TV shows and you know, the like. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, go ahead and subscribe as well. Go ahead and check out the Game Club episode I did with Blue Couch for Productions from the Lions Honor Game Club in the description below. We talk about Red Dead Redemption 2 and that podcast is really fun to do and I really love doing it. So with all that being said, again, I hope you enjoy the video and go ahead and subscribe, like the video, comment down below your thoughts on Red Dead Redemption 2, and I'll see you all in my next video.